Quick takes, let's get it. Carmelo Anthony has retired from the NBA, ending his 19-year career as the league's ninth all-time leading scorer. SA, how would you define Melo's career? One of the great scorers this game has ever seen. One of the better people, the more decent people you'll ever see. Um, really, really good dude. Uh, tremendous scorer. Uh, was average, I mean, for the first 15 years of career, he averaged 22, 22 to 25 in his sleep. Three times he averaged over 28 points per game in a season. Just something, a spectacular offensive player. Lone regret, Perk, Big Perk. I know it's a quick take, but in my words, lone regret. He should have been a member of the Big Three. He signed a five-year deal instead of a three-year deal that would have given him an opt-out in 2010, Molly. He was supposed to be, it was supposed to be him, LeBron, and D-Wade in South Beach instead of him, LeBron, and Bosh. That's what it was supposed to be. But Melo signed a five-year deal three years earlier, couldn't get out. And that's why Melo, one of the great scorers and one of the great people mm -hmm. this game has ever seen, doesn't have a championship. He's a Hall of Famer. I just yes, wish he that, is. I just wish that he had uh he had been in a position to capture a championship. And I was I was just gonna piggyback off of that, Stephen A. When you talk about putting the ball in the bucket, absolutely he's one of the best we've ever seen put the damn ball in the basket. But I wanna applaud Melo on his professionalism. Throughout his career, like we don't we didn't never see Melo, you know, hearing about anything for us, him outside of basketball. Um, he always showed up to work. He always was ready to hoop. And on top of that, you know what else? He never shied away from criticism. And he never took it personal. Never you didn't see him go you never seen him going back and forth. He just he just went out there and did him. And I just want to applaud that brother on the uh, Hall of Fame career. I was a year up under him, man. I watched him all the way through high school, went to plenty of his games. And, you know, you just always want to appreciate your brother, you know, when it comes to the end because it's never easy. It's never right. easy walking away from the game. And he's definitely our brother, no doubt. Absolutely. Now it's his son's turn, fellas. Uh, we're going to stay in the NBA right now. On the doorstep of reaching their first ever NBA Finals, the Nuggets say they must do something today that's never been done before. No team has been able to sweep LeBron James in a playoff series before the Finals. And the Nuggets themselves have never... Good, bad, or indifferent, you know, since game one against the Hawks. Uh, so, you know, I'm, you know, I'm certain... After every game you win, you're the best player in the best team. And, you know, when you lose, you're not the star and the team's not good enough. So uh, I'm certain there'll be some of that. Uh, but, you know, out of sight, out of mind. The obvious letdown. I feel like we let our fan base organization down. We let ourselves down. And it was collective. We can point fingers. Uh, but in reality, it was just embarrassing. Just, I just didn't have him ready to play. I should have, uh, whatever it was, whether it was a starting lineup, whether it was an adjustment, just I have to get them in a better place, ready to play, and that's on me. So why did the Celtics get destroyed last night, you asked? Look no further than their two all-NBA stars in Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, who just couldn't make shots. Meanwhile, undrafted guard Gabe Vincent outscored them both 29-26. to 26. Kendrick, obviously you played for this franchise, won a championship with them in Boston. I'm curious, who looks worse to you now? Is it the coach and Joe Missoula or in the stars and Tatum and Brown? Oh, Molly, it's definitely Joe Missoula. And for him to go up there in his post-game interview and say, I didn't have those guys ready, I got to figure it out, well, that's a damn shame. And I knew that he made the wrong choice when we got the report before the game started, that he was starting Derek White and putting Robert and bringing Robert Williams off the bench. That is a huge problem to me. Your best player in Jason Tatum has come out time and time again publicly telling you, if we're going to win a championship, this is the, the most important piece 
of this team outside of me and Jalen Brown is Robert Williams. But you bet you keep on harping on starting a 36-year-old Al Horford because all you want to do is worry about the offensive end and stretching the floor and having guys play AAU-style basketball so that way y'all can live by the three and die by the three. No, you're supposed to start Robert Williams. He does so much for you on both ends of the floor. We already know what he's going to bring defensively. Elite shot blocking, being able to guard the pick and roll, being able to get out there and switch out on one, on uh, guards and wings if he have to. Offensively, when Jason Tatum had 51 in game seven, a lot of that came off the back of Robert Williams. Because he's so much of a dynamic roller, because he's a lob threat at the basket and guys have to pay attention to him, because he plays the dunker spot so well, it allows those guys to be able to operate and be the best version of themselves. So I'm looking at Joe Missoula and I'm sitting up here saying, well, damn, the Celtics' identity all last year was defense. But you made an adjustment to go offensively by inserting Derek White and putting Robert Williams on the bench. So I'm looking at Joe Mazzulla on this one. Got to disagree with you there. I'm not disagreeing with your point about uh, Joe Mazzulla, and it is a problem, and it is something that we will get in to as this show progresses today, Kendrick Perkins, and I hope you had a nice weekend, by the way, my brother. But I got to tell you something right now. Um, I sincerely doubt that you had a nice weekend after watching that atrocity last night uh, because you are a prideful champion representing the Boston Celtics franchise, even though obviously you're an analyst for this network. And there's no way in hell you could tell me that you got any enjoyment, even though you did forewarn all of us, that especially me, that Boston did not want to see Miami. I don't give a damn what you said. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't expect this. Not what we saw. I would remind you that last night as we watched Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, we watched Jason Tatum and and Jalen Brown combine to shoot 12 of 35 from the field, one of 14 from three-point range, six turnovers, okay, in that process, more turnovers than assists. In this series, they're shooting seven for 40 from three-point range, the two of them. Seven for 40, that is 17%. And they have more turnovers than assists. That is atrocious. And I love me some Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. And I believe both are stars. And it's hard to imagine how you can transfer from dropping 51 in a closeout game seven against the Philadelphia 76ers to this mess that we've witnessed in this series. It's an indictment against the Philadelphia 76ers, no doubt about it. It's an indictment against Embiid and Harden, okay, which is something we'll get into another time. But it is now you look at giving credit to the Miami Heat, and of course they deserve it. But on their worst day, meaning Boston's worst day, I never expected this for Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown to a look helpless. We haven't seen that. We've seen them defeated. We've seen them beat. We haven't seen them look helpless. And more importantly, we have never, I don't think there has ever been a time where I've seen the Boston Celtics and I felt they got their hearts snatched out their chest. The only thing that I can think of in my years of watching the NBA where I've seen something tantamount to this. If you remember Kendrick Perkins, remember, I think it was 2000. I'm trying to remember which year it was, but the Lakers ran the San Antonio Spurs out of out of California. Mm-hmm. And Tim Duncan sat there depressed, looking like he was crazy. 